right, g'day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans and welcome back. Today, guess what? On the coast again, sand and surf. Fantastic location. Only just down the track from the Murray Mouth entrance. So the Murray releases all its water. The mighty Murray, the biggest river in Australia. Releases all the water just down the track there. So it really is an interesting beach. Big open beach, you can drive on it. And uh, obviously you can set up and paint. Okay, now today what I'm going to do is just go for the big impression. So I've got a big board I'm painting on. Palette knives, sorry, palette knives, heaps of chunky paint. It's all about simplicity. It's a big, simple subject, so how I'm going to treat it like that. I'm going to treat it with big, simple marks. Fantastic stuff. All right, so what I've done here, you can see all I've done is just basically put the horizon line in so I don't end up with a weird sort of look at painting when it's hanging on the wall. Other than that, pretty much ready to go. Okay, so now what is the biggest difference between this white board and the subject? That's the first thing I want to get in. Alright, so every painting's different I find. I reckon what I might do is just start getting that sky in. Alright, there's a bit because we're down the coast today, there's quite a bit of haze on the horizon. And it's always good to paint a coastal haze because that will help set the foreground up. If you key the background down, you'll set the foreground up for a good action. So I'm mixing cobalt blue, a little bit of magenta, and a bit of burnt sienna. And those combinations are just going to knock it back to a kind of key down bluey grey. Probably about right, so it's quite dark what I've done, but that'll only add to the drama if you keep it down. So let's just get it in. Alright. Not quite touching the line yet, not quite touching the horizon line, I'm just going to bring the paint down to it. And then what I'll do is I might get the brush out and soften them together. But for now, I don't want to smudge that line on the horizon because I've got that pretty straight. So I'm just going to keep it how it is for now and keep on going. That'll probably do that, all right. Let's have a look, yeah. Oh, this is fun stuff. Now, let's get a bit of paper towel. Bit of a cloud bank also just down there. You can see a bit of a cloud bank just above that horizon I was painting. So just throw a couple of warm tones in. Yellow ochre burnt sienna plus car equals fun. Okay, let's go. Plenty of white, high key. Plenty of mixing of course. A bit more white than that. I've mixed up a ton here, but it won't matter because that'll be good for the beach sand later on. Just placing all the colours next to each other at the moment. Bit there. A slight pale green just there. Yeah. All right. So if that's the case, do that yellow ochre, a bit of blue, yellow ochre blue, and some of that white mix I was just mixing up a second ago. Let's give a pale green to the sky. Let's have a look what we got here. Make it up as you go. The thing about working on site, another car. The thing about working on site is you can see the subtle differences a lot easier than if you're painting in the studio. Just get those greens in. Yellow ochre and white. White, let's 
going to be plenty of wanted, I can say that. A bit of high level cloud, so good fun that is. Now I'm going for some more of a straight coat by blue and white for the sky as it gets a bit higher. More white. Gee, there's a lot of white going on today. Really get it all in and work it out later on. That's the way to go. <laughs> try and make, try and make your painting look like the subject as quickly as you can by going for the biggest differences. And the biggest differences at the moment is this board is white and that subject is not. So let's get rid of all that white. Get darker as I go up. What I might do is get a really put that there so I can just wear it later on. And uh, I'm gonna for the top of the sky I'm gonna make it more of a magenta and cobalt blue. So it's a really kind of rich earthy. You can see as it goes higher it gets more red in it. Have a look. Just a nice clean strong colour, maybe a little bit more blue than that. that is because you know, it just makes a bit of this some of those waves are standing up and you can see the bottom has been stirred up by the breaking waves so you can actually get the sand colour the sand colour is actually in the wave itself the funnel funnel's cool I reckon blue Day. Bringing that up to that edge there. A bit more turquoise in some of those breaking waves. So, move that to one side, get a bit of that sky colour from before, white, blue, oh the colour's coming in, if I stay here too long, I'll actually be in the water, so, I can see that last wave came right up, but I think I've still got enough time, so I think we're all right. get some of those
see like the sky in there is reflecting Right now, I'll just go get a brush and soften up a bit. So you can see when I do use brushes, I like to use brushes, like big brushes. They like to muck around, especially with a big subject like this now. Just get that paint closer to the horizon too, but I've got to be careful of interfering with the uh, I do not want to interfere with how perfectly straight that horizon is but I still want to soften it so I'm just going right on the edge don't lose the original the original mass that you did there so I'm just sort of taking my time here because this is one of the important parts of the painting this is where got to get it straight then later on you can do whatever the cuts you want but for now you've got to get that one straight right let's get some of this done just mix 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 Don't touch those warm colours yet because if I start mixing these blues, the blues I've got on the brush now, if I start touching that warm tone, the whole thing will go grey. Because blue and orangey colours are the opposite on the colour wheel, so they will make it grey obviously. So you've got to be very careful when you start touching that, wet on wet that is. Just get that paint in, mix her up. Random brush strokes. Okay, so what are we going to do now? Like I said, I've got to watch out for that. I'm softening with a new brush. Here comes the car again. Flat stick. The only way to enjoy nature is flat out. That's what some of those uh, four-wheel drive enthusiasts are thinking about. So, stand back and take it to that one. I stood back, I can tell I definitely do want to blend that more. It's going to bring it all together softer. Now I'm starting with massive long strokes. But I'll increase our uh, variety soon, later. You know, I just want to get it soft first. Then you can kind of do a few other things later. All right. Let's get that sand in. Let's get the sand in. As before, I've got mucking around here with tons and tons of paint. So now I've got plenty there just to add a bit more burnt sienna and yellow ochre. For the wet sand,
get it on. Oh yeah, get it on. Heck, everyone's starting to leave. Maybe they know something I don't know. soften but I'll go have a look first. it into this green that I've mixed, just getting rid of a little bit of it. Still with a shadow of it remaining, an echo of the light. Picked up the brush marks a bit here. Where that wave's going to be. Yeah, that's kind of working. Hang on. I've got the brushes stabbed in. This brush here I need to clean off a bit. Just come in and soften this a little bit. Just run the brush. Okay, I'll get rid of that bit there. Just run in the brush quietly over it. Slowly over the palette knife marks. At the same time, you've also got down reflecting, so it's good to go this way. Pull a few down like so. Lightly rub across that. Lightly rub across those downward marks, give it the feeling of reflections. And that's the good thing about working with knives. You can rub them perfectly clean. These brushes, you know, you get a bit of mud in them, you have to dip them in turps and whatever, but I don't use turps when I'm painting on site. So I use straight paint. So I just rub things and obviously uh color knife you can rub it absolutely clean and just go for bang, a very clean mark again. So it's good to just watch, it's good to watch the surf and just feel the energy of what's going on out there for a while. That's the good thing about painting on the side, it's not like a photo, it's not stagnant, it's actually moving. And so what you do is you just stand there and look at it, feel the energy. So I'm using, I'm using a bit of a cat yellow and white to get that really fluffy surf. The good thing about today, 
is there's an offshore breeze. Hang on. Put it in here. Put it down a bit like so. There's an offshore breeze, so the surface kind of spraying up. So the reason I've come down here is like quite often you get a coastal breeze, like straight in, rough as guts. Today, it's a northerly and the wind's coming over the top of me, so I'm way more protected. But because of that, the surf is flaring up perfect for the surf. Not that the surf is absolutely perfect out there at the moment, but that's the kind of conditions that is good for catching a few waves. I'm just trying to compose a few waves here and there. Just feeling it as I go, feeling the composition, feeling the painting. Every painting is different. A bit of disturb, disturb back there. A few ripples on here. see here is actually the white board it's not paint and sometimes that's a good trick instead of painting everything if it's the right tone just leave it and that adds to the simplification waves here as you can see. So it's good to put fine marks, slightly rub through, reflection yes. Okay. Just chop it around a bit. I might just add a bit in there. Let it go by feel. Oh that look at that. into that blue sky. Well, here we go. I'm noticing there's a lot of subtle reflections in blue from the sky reflecting into that soft sand there. It's beautiful. beautiful there, it's got, like I said, I'm just going to pull it through, bring some of that surfing like that, you can see it all, hella nice great for that, as the wave stands up, pull all that, put all that surf in the wave as it stands, you can see all the broken foam and whatever, and you can add that beautiful in the it's so soft, you know, not always soft, but it can be soft. How's that sound? Alright, stand back and have a look. That's all happening now. It's like a freeway here, isn't it? Alright, what do we got? Just 
Yeah, I'm just trying to work out what black he is. Might go for the big one. I'm just trying to feather the top of those waves a little bit. Go for the other one. Oh, what we actually might go for, what are we doing? Go back to that. Pull up like so. That's kind of cool. That's working. And just lifting the top of the wave up. As she breaks, it's just throwing that foam up a little. Like I said, I'm softening a few things with subtlety. I 
use these tins to uh, paint the picture. Really big art spectrum tins, fantastic stuff. But I just want to top up. I don't want to actually put heaps of paint on now. I just want a bit of white, so I'm going to go for the cube. Still art spectrum, good gear. Oh, here comes that tide. A few gulls there, I should probably add them. Probably should. have those tiny little fine legs that really typifies them. Where are we? I can hardly see that. Before I do that, I might just take the bottom edge off that gull. Just painting some of the seagulls in. Oops. <clears throat> take that red off, we don't need that. I might get my finger there just to uh, Seaweed in. A few marks of the car's been driving. Okay, let's put that there and put that there. Bring 
ਨਾਲੇ ਜੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲੀ ਆ simplify some of the marks so I'm using this knife to just abstract it slightly. Just feel like softening some of these areas by pulling through with a knife with no paint on it. I feel like it here too. That just softens and simplifies it. Good now. Yeah, big knife. I mean, big brush. So we're just going to really contrast this whole action here by simplifying this stuff here even more. Everything's about everything is about contrast. It's about light against dark, warm against cool, soft against hard, thick paint against thin paint. Any sort of contrast like that will help with painting. So what I'm doing. softening areas to make the focal areas jump out. Here. I've captured the big impression, which is my goal. So what I'll do now, I'm just going to get rid of some of the white on the edges. Now the reason I get rid of the white on the edge is so white, if you're painting light, white will draw your eye to it. So obviously down here that's not the focal area, you want your eyes to get driven to the subject. So get rid of the few white little bits down here. Always, but if you get a few of them, will help draw your eyes to the area that you want people to look at. Okay, thank you. What I'll do is get the camera on. 